Minister Steve Clark is joining me live now with more on what is next and why the province says it will not be reassessing development on the green belt. Minister Clark, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me on this morning, Tammy. I appreciate it. Now, we wanted to have you on. We know that you faced the media yesterday for about an hour's time addressing this, but there were certain issues around accountability as well that were not answered. So my first question to you is, now with opposition leaders and, and more calling for your resignation, do you have plans on resigning and will there be changes when it comes to your chief of staff? I appreciate uh, yesterday's press conference at uh, the rare opportunity for the premier to directly uh, respond to an auditor general report. I uh, I thank him for his support of myself and and my staff and and my staff and I are committed uh, to uh, making sure that the auditor general's recommendations, the 14 process recommendations, are are acted upon and and dealt with swiftly. Um, and, and I also acknowledge uh, responsibility that uh, the government in the middle of a housing supply crisis that we've never seen in this province, that we acted too quickly. We, we acted too quickly. Um, the decisions were made uh, in a way that, as the report's recommendations indicate, need to be uh, tightened, need to be uh, focused more on transparency and to get integrity back in the system. And I'm, I'm committed to do it. But as a government, when you have a problem as severe as we have in terms of the housing supply crisis, you can you can take two paths. You can stop building or you can continue to build. And our government's chosen to continue to build to ensure that the dream of home ownership is not pushed farther and farther away from uh, Ontario families. Now, you can continue to build, absolutely. And I, I do agree that there is a, a housing crisis out there. Continuing to build is one thing. But one of the recommendations, the one of the 15 recommendations that you will not be implementing is reconsidering opening up the green belt. How then can you not reconsider this when you know and you've admitted that there were mistakes in the process and that there were biases that an AG report has put out? How can we go ahead with this plan and not reconsider it when you know it was done wrong? Well, uh, because uh, many of these properties that uh, were being discussed had been requested for years by municipalities and others. The, the fact that all of these properties are privately owned uh, and that will realize uh, houses for 150,000 uh, individuals is, is really important. And the fact that the government, uh, through the negotiation process, can create billions of dollars of community benefit at no cost to the province uh, is important. Things like the roads and schools and health care facilities and parks will all be paid in the billions of dollars as community benefits as a result. And in fact, there'll be uh, 50,000 plus homes being built on those properties. That is a public benefit as well. But I, I understand guys, that the process was was quick. You know, the, the, you're in the middle of a crisis, you're going to move fast. Uh, I'm committed to ensuring that those accountability measures are put into place and I'm committed to making sure it gets done as soon as possible. You talk about accountability, but you've already, you have not said that anyone's being held accountable. There's no one who's being held accountable. Everyone keeps uh, their job and continues. At the end of the day, uh, Tammy, uh, the Premier and I are responsible. We're responsible to Ontarians to respond to uh, the report and we've been unequivocal uh, when it comes to 14 recommendations that we, we want to move fast and ensure that that transparency gets put back in the process. That's accountability. When did you find out uh, that this process was flawed? When exactly did you find out? Well, I, you know, I've, I've, I, I spoke to the uh, the Auditor General last Friday and received the, the report, uh, you know, Tuesday afternoon, uh, was able to, with the Premier yesterday, respond formally as, a, as the government. Uh, the report indicates exactly what I've said all along. I was briefed. Uh, on the uh, on the properties in uh, late October, and the following week presented them to the premier and cabinet, who accepted the the recommendations. And regardless of of of, of that process, we acknowledge that we need to improve the process. And again, I, I I want Ontarians to know that those 14 process related recommendations we're we're going to move quickly on ensuring that that happens. Again, there but were the 15 same... recommendations, not 14. There were 15. There's one that you're you're not going to be Correct. implementing. Correct. No, I, yeah. I, and, and I recognize that, but I, I think I'm 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 open with Ontarians on on the why. The why is 
We have an incredible housing supply deficit. Uh, we're going to do everything we can as a government. We ran on a on a uh, on a platform last summer uh, to build at least 1.5 million homes. We're the we're the fastest growing jurisdiction in North America. We we welcome 500,000 Ontarians uh, to our province. That's faster than than uh, Florida uh, right. and and Texas. So you know, you have that tremendous growth. You got to have a plan in place. And as I said earlier. You have two plans. You either don't build or you do build. We're, we're going to continue to build housing. We, is there we not a third plan, though, Minister? The third plan is building, but doing it in a way that is open to all developers rather than not just making billions for communities, but billions for a very small amount of developers who have a clear link to your chief of staff. It, there aren't just two areas. There are not two ways to go about this. Are there not more? Majority of these properties, Tammy, have been in public conversation for years. But they've been Mayors purchased and, by these developers uh, over the last year or so. Oh, that's not correct. The, some these of them, properties have, some of them have, have been, yes. The, the, none of these, and I'm not going to argue about the properties. They, they, they are all in private hands. We are going to negotiate public benefits, uh, including uh, homes for 150,000 people. Um, there are going to be billions of dollars of community benefits uh, that are added in these communities, uh, as I said earlier, healthcare facilities, schools, parks, roads, transit, all at the expense of the of the private individuals who own these lands. These will be public benefits paid for by by private interests that will benefit those communities moving forward, uh, which is a huge benefit um, to Ontario. And sorry, I just have one last question, Housing Minister uh, Clark, as the minister. How are you not aware that this was happening in your office well, I, I, with such a controversial move? I understand that you were briefed about it just before you presented it uh, to the legislature, but it, it, you're the housing minister. How are you not aware of how pieces, large pieces of Greenbelt land was being chosen? The, the, the process uh, was flawed. I, I'm the first one to recognize that. Um, you have a situation where um, you move quickly when there's a crisis. I acknowledge that, and I'm, I'm going to fix it. Okay. Minister Clark, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Tammy.